Okay, this video is going to be called How to Fix Your Sagan Orthopedic King Size Bed. Alright, you know how the mattress comes rolled up, right? It's rolled up, and you know your box springs come in a little thin square box, you know, big heavy box, it's flat, you know. So, you know, you know, all your box springs are is just a steel frame with cloth around it. You know, that they fold open and, okay, so, wow. So what happens is, your mattress, you know, that sags in, just put some pillows underneath that. No, have no shame. Why get a new bed? Have no shame. Put some pillows underneath it and it will flatten it right out. Yes, trust me. Okay, I did it. All right? Have no shame. Put some pillows underneath it. It'll, it'll flatten. See? The, the frame itself broke from me sitting on it. Never sit on your orthopedic bed. Lay on it and that's it. Never sit on it. Lesson learned. You know, after uh, fuck, five years, five years later, that's what happens. I'm sitting on it. Okay, so yeah, yeah. And then, uh, there's another issue, okay? This is, let me, look at me. <laughs> look at me. There's another issue, okay? These bed frames, you know, they come separate. No footboard, no headboard, okay? So you put it together, you, you got the box springs and that, you know, your mattress and that, you unfold them, you put them in there. You set it up, you know, you got the legs, you know, the little thin-ass legs, you know. And, and then uh, you set it up, and you know, open it up, it goes in there, and it goes in there side by side. Okay, two little box springs, you know, two little full-size box springs. They go side by side and they go in between the frame. Now, if you ever notice that if you move your frame around a little bit, that, you know, you go plotch on your bed or jump on your bed or lay down on your bed, all of a sudden, bam, your box spring falls through the fucking frame. You know, it, it, if it ain't straight, it's going to fall through. Trust me. If you move your frame anywhere, or just from after a while, you know, laying on it or jumping on it or whatever, you know, sometimes people like to jump in their bed, you know. And eventually, it sides and shifts and stuff, you know, boom. Your frame will fall down to the floor. Trust me. It's happened to me. How can you fix that? All right. See what I did here? You see this? Yeah, I'm going to bring it down. See this? Right here, see this? This uh, three by four board. Okay, there is two holes there for your footboard. See that? I got screws in there. All right. Yeah. Look at it. Look at it. See that? See the two little screws on the bottom there? Okay. That's for your head footboard, and then you got one for your headboard. Okay. Extra 150 bucks. The fucking bed alone with the box springs and the mattress and the frame was a thousand dollars. Walmart. Go online. You can order one. Just, I did. Whatever. So I got this uh, three by four board, which is perfect. See that? Put them screw holes. Put screw, uh, wood screws in there. Boom, boom. The other side. Boom, boom. There you go. Solid. Sand it down. There you go. Now I realize that uh, if you push your box spring back a little bit, you know, pull the frame for it. Push the box spring back a little bit. You can do that. You know. Cause it's solid. It's a solid, solid square frame. It ain't gonna move or nothing. This is solid. Trust me. This is solid. This ain't moving. So then, I got this footstool that I broke. I put the footstool underneath the the mattress where the box being broke. Okay. Put a pillow on top there. See pillows underneath there. Shoved it right in there. Boom. Now, now I can actually sit on it. See, see. Now I can actually sit on it. You know. Watch. I can actually sit on it, you know. I can plot right on it, you know. Boom. There you go. Solid. Solid as a rock. It ain't falling. It ain't breaking. This right here is solid oak. It's 50 pounds, 3 by 4 solid oak, okay? So this is not going to break. This is not going to fall apart or nothing. I got the screws in there, set screws in there. Boom. Done, okay? And look at that. I'm sitting on my bed. And you know what? I'm not damaging the box spring or the mattress. Wish I would have done this from the beginning. God, I tell ya. Wish I, you know, maybe somebody's gonna invent that. Oh yeah. 
they're gonna probably make the frame a little bit longer. You know, uh, all they have to do is make it, uh, uh, I'd say a good eight inches. Make the frame eight inches longer, you know. Put a, a bench, there you go. Maybe one you, you can even open, put your, yeah, they, I think they have that, you know. You can open it, you know, like a top, you know. Closes, put hinges on it, closes, opens, you can put blankets and pillows in there, close it up, and, and, it, and it's padded so people can sit on it. There you go. Now that's my invention, so if you fuckers go and do that shit, I want some profit sharing. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to get another peach pear. I'll be right back. YouTube Carl Kiss is right. Yeah, I average about 10 videos a day, you know, average, about 10 videos a day, so I got over 4,000 videos. If you can't find one video that makes you laugh, then don't even bother subscribing to my channel, but I'm guaranteed you're going to find one video at least out of 4,200 videos, 4,200 videos, okay? You're going to find one that's going to make you laugh and you're going to subscribe, all right? Like I said, there's over 4,000 videos. There's going to be more than one that's going to make you laugh. I got a lot of videos. How to fix strip, just like now. How to fix, okay? How This one's called How to Fix Your Sagan Bed. And, and, how to make it so you can sit on your bed without wrecking it. Yeah. That's going to be on the second title. Now. Yeah. I'm still got. I so much deserve this. So much deserve this. Yeah. I am so happy. <laughs> I am so happy. Yeah. I have a place to sit. I'm in bed. Without wrecking it. I'm glad they got my my boo boo blanket wash. Uh, right now I'm washing the sleeping bag, king size sleeping bag, and now I got my boo boo pillow back, my black fuzzy pillow that I use to snuggle with when I go to sleep. So yeah, it's like a quarter size body pillow. There you go. I'll call it my hugging pillow. There you go. Something to hug onto. I ain't got a woman, so I got to hug onto something. That's what it is. Oh, jeez. My companion pillow. Oh, jeez. I love my companion pillow. She is so soft. I should give her a name. What should I call her? Sally? Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. That's the second good laugh I had all day. My companion pillow. Sad, right? Sad, right? Yeah. Hey, do what you gotta do, right? Do what you gotta do.
Oh, I know. His album is real good tonight. Just knowing the fact that, trust me, it's been on my mind to fix that put to a long time ago. And now, my daddy was right. He says, never throw shit away. Never. You can take parts off of it and use it for something else, and that's exactly what that. This was from a footstool. Took the legs off of it, boom. Now it's a sitting stool. Ah. And it's solid oak, just like the board it's sitting on. Solid oak. Imagine that. Imagine that. Told you I'm smart. I am smart. I act dumb. Oh yeah, I admit it. I act real dumb sometimes. When it comes to people like Mike, Mike now, uh, Mike Nelson. I'll play dumb one. He does it too, I think. Or, Mike Nelson's book smart. Don't get me wrong. But, he is not street smart. He's not mechanically inclined. He don't know how to fix shit. He don't know how to cook. He does not even know how to operate a fucking rivet gun. I had him help me one day to put some rivets in my car. My Ford Fairmont had a lot of holes in it. And I had him help me put, put a rivet in. Just one. Just one fucking rivet. It was so important that I had to hold the steel on the bottom. You know, with my wooden handle of my hammer, so he wouldn't drill through it. First, he had to drill the hole. So I pushed the steel up. I fucking marked the spot right here, Mike. See this little X? I want you to drill right here, straight down, straight down. Hold the drill. Hold it like this. Hold it like this, Mike. Don't like this. Not like that. Hold it like this. Don't just like this. Yeah. And then hold it and push the button. And go straight down. That's all you gotta do, Mike. Okay. So okay, he did that. You know? Drilled it right into the handle of the hammer. I think it still have it. Yeah. Hold on a second, Ray. I'm cleaning the seat off. Okay. Just got out of from me off the seat. Anyhow, anyhow. Okay, so now I told him. As, do you want to hold the steel or do you want to rivet the steel? So what's the fucking difference? Well, if you hold the steel, you're going to get dirty. Well, uh, I told you, I didn't come here to fucking work. And I damn sure did not come here to get fucking dirty. I got my good fucking clothes on. Yeah, because he likes going to the bar and looking good, you know. As in between the party system that we're having at my place. He goes right to the bar. He's right across the street, right across the alley. Sorry about that. So anyhow, anyhow, so he's going to be on top. And this fucker's just fucking sweating and shit, you know? That's why he said he didn't come there to work. He gets all pissed off and he starts sweating because he took a shower, he's got clean clothes on, and now he's fucking sweating because this motherfucker can comb his hair and he will sweat. And he's done it already. Comb his fucking hair and he's sweating. <sighs> okay. Anyhow, anyhow.
So, I'm on the bottom. Yeah, I don't mind getting dirty. You know, if it's for my car, I'm going to get dirty. This is when I was skinnier, okay? When I was skinnier. When I had my 78 Ford Fairmont, I was skinny. Skinnier. You know? I think it was. Well, it's, I guess it's after I came out of jail, so I did gain 100 pounds. Okay, whatever. So, yeah, I had it all jacked up on blocks and shit. The car was way up in the air so I could get underneath it. Yeah, okay. So I'm underneath this car. He's inside the car. You know, bad idea because I can't believe he didn't knock it off the blocks and make the car fall down on top of me and I would have been dead. Anyhow, anyhow, never thought about that. Because he's fucking clumsy and shit, you know. He has no fucking brains of fucking fixing shit or doing shit. He's book smart. He can... You know, words and how to spell, how to say, whatever, he, you know, numbers, he, he, yeah, whatever. He graduated from high school. whoop de doo Alright, so any, I'm street smart. I was raised in Milwaukee. Anyhow, any home. So I'm underneath there, okay? I'm pushing up, and I'm like, go, go, go. Put the ribbon in. Put the ribbon in. So I'm pushing up this steel. I mean, I got to, you know... It, the steel was kind of bent and warped and shit, you know. And when I pushed up on it, it brought it close to the steel inside the car. So you got the floorboard steel that I'm pushing up into the floorboard steel of the car. And so when he pushes down on the rivet, so I had I had a I had a push right beside where the hole is. So you know the rivet can go down, not hit the hammer handle. So I, I see them push it through. Now fucking listen to the story, listen to it very closely. This fat, lazy motherfucker got no fucking ability of fucking holding his wrist straight, holding ribbon straight. It's just a little tiny fucking ribbon. Little tiny fucking eighth inch hole. You know? Or sixteen. It's a sixteenth hole. Now you gotta keep that hole nice and tight. So when you put the ribbon in there, the ribbon's the same size as the hole. If you fucking move it around like this, what's going to happen, guys, gals? You're going to make the hole bigger. So when you fucking ribbon it, right, and punch it, of course it's going to get wider. It's going to be like a quarter inch. It's not going to come through. Guess what? When he was fucking, I'm like, Jesus Christ, Mike, what are you fucking doing? Are you fucking the thing or what? Well, I'm fucking trying to jack it. And, and uh, pump it, and uh, it's kind of fucking hard to do. Mike, hold the ribbon gun still. Squeeze the fucker with your hand, you fucking pussy ass motherfucker. I didn't say that, but I wanted to. He had no. I, I chopped my arm off with the fucking chainsaw. I was able to squeeze the fucking, hold it straight. You know, I put it in tight, hold it straight, and squeeze it with the other hand. It's not rocket science, people. But God damn it, man. You can't be fucking wiggling it all around and shit because he, he, he's fucking putting all his weight into it and shit, you know? Fat, lazy motherfucker. So when he got done with it, oh my fucking God. He just fucked up my whole fucking car. That one ribbon was so fucking important. It was a starter ribbon. It pulled the steel together, ribbed it together so it's fucking there. Then you start working around it, you know? Put rivets around it, you know? Put it all together, all the way across, all the way around. But what he did was left a big fucking gap in between the steel. Popped the fucking ribbon off, you know? He, once he popped the ribbon off, there it was. With the fucking, at least a three inch fucking gap or whatever, you know, like, Jesus, goddamn fucking Christ. Once I start bitching at him, I'm like, Mike, you fucking wrecked it. He fucking got up and started fucking walking, grabbed his fucking beer, dumped it out, and fucking left. He goes, duh, go fuck yourself. I told you, I didn't come here to work, and uh, you were just like my fucking dad. Can't be fucking happy, got a bitch about it. Well, fuck you. And he fucking left. 
You know what he did? He had fucking, that's why he's cocky. He had money in his pocket. And once he hit that, 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 uh, curve, you know, he walked down the other end, walked back to the other end, went right back to the bar. That's what he did. Blew the rest of his fucking money. He had about 400 bucks. He had a thousand bucks. He spent like 600 bucks on the fucking dinner or whatever, 300 bucks or whatever. He, he spent quite a bit of money on, you know, and then uh, he made sure he ate all of it and drank all of it. And that's why he fucking left. Yeah, it's probably about $350. Yeah, he made sure he ate it all and drank it all before he left. So that's why he pretty much left with an attitude. Because then he went to the bar and spent the rest of his money. Yeah, so he had $1,000, so yeah, he, he had $600. He was cocky as hell. He probably went right to the bar and blew the rest of it. Yeah, that's, that's just the way my kids and told me to fuck off. So... Here I am, fucking pissed like a motherfucker. Now I just lost my fucking help to try to fix the issue. You know? I didn't have my germ on. What I, what I could have done was cut the ribbon off. I had, I would have to. But I couldn't get the ribbon out. You know, once it's in there, it's, it's in there. You can't get that fucker out. You can't get that fucker out. And, and uh, the ribbon... See, he made it expand between the steel, so I couldn't put the steel together no matter what. So I uh, actually, I, I, I should have did it by myself. Should have did it by myself. I should have just took a board, pushed it up, you know, push, put a board on here, push it up, put a board underneath it, don't hold it. Never thought of that. So I really didn't need his help. It, Sometimes, you know, I, I'm that kind of person. I'm a stubborn, fucking Bohemian, Hungarian. I have no friends. I have nobody to help me. I would do this shit. I would say, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it myself. That's the way I am. I would do this shit by myself. I don't fucking care. I don't need nobody's help. I would do it my fucking self. It might take me a while, but I'll do it my fucking self. Me and my gimpy, gimpy little arm that I cut off with the chainsaw. You know, I should have told him, just fucking sit there, Mike, drink your fucking liquor, and, and, and pass out whatever the fuck you want. I'll do it myself. I should have. I should have. Because that still bothers me. Even though the car's gone and, you know, got the heavy Chevy. At least now with the heavy Chevy, all the floorboards are solid. I love my heavy Chevy. The car came from, uh... Canada or Canadian or whatever, I don't know, but, yeah, no salt, no salt, it was kept in the garage with a tarp over it, old man bought it from a police auction, so he bought it, and I don't know, like, fuck, I, I've been driving it for, God, wow, well, 15 years, 15 years I've been driving that car. And it's still solid. Still. Because I've been driving that car in the summertime only. You know? Only. Driving in the summer only. You know, I didn't drive it in the snow. So that's why it's still solid. And uh, I've been driving the truck in the snow. Yeah, the, the truck is really going bad. I, you know? God. Truck's coming back. I got a hole in the floor right now. Uh, the driver's side it's starting to get pretty big. You know, I would love to go out there and fix it. You know, this would be perfect time to do it, but now I ain't got no money. Okay? It ain't working. You know, it costs money. Uh, oh, fuck! My ribbon gun and all that shit is at the other house. I had a whole bucket for that job, you know. Everything I need. Yeah. At the other house. Oh, God. I left so much stuff there that, you know, it just ain't right. Her evicting me 
Annie. I hope you're happy. Bye.